Hello, honors algebra pursuits and algebra pursuits. Mr. Lawrence here, and we're going to review absolute values, but we're going to do it from the point of view of symmetry because we really need to understand what's going on here. I know a lot of you can tell me uh, that the absolute value of x equals 5. You can say, hey, x equals 5 or x equals negative 5. But what some of you are failing to miss is symmetry. Remember we use symmetry a lot in parabolas and it made it easier? We can use symmetry with this type of problem as well. All right, let me get a number line going here. Um, I'm going to show negative 5. I'm going to have a point there, right? I'm going to show positive 5. Now, normally in symmetry with like parabolas or something, we're looking for a vertex. This won't have a vertex, certainly, if I want to graph, you know, uh, the absolute value of x plus 2 minus 3. That'll have a vertex. But let's, so let's not call it a vertex since we're, we're not dealing with a two-variable problem. We're only in one dimension. Let me ask you, what's the center of this graph? Well, 5 and negative 5 are two points plotted. The number in the exact middle is 0, right? And notice that 0 would make the absolute value zero. You see that? Okay, now hold on to that idea. I know you don't quite get what I'm talking about yet, but you will in a minute. Oh, what would happen if it's less than five? Well, I would need to go x is less than five, and, because remember, a less than is an and, x is greater than negative five. I have to make that negative five, and I have to turn the inequality around, right? And so a graph like that would be an open point at both 5 and negative 5, and then I would shade everything in between. And maybe you see better now, the center of that little segment is right there at 0. Okay? All right, let's go on to another one. Don't worry, we're going to bring this together soon. All right, so let me solve this one. Let's go x plus 1 equals 5, or x plus 1 equals negative 5. So I solve and I get x equal to uh, 4 or x equals negative 6. Those are the two solutions, right? Well, negative 6 would be here. Uh, positive 4 might be about there. What numbers smack in the middle? Well, if I add them together, I get negative 2. Divide by 2, I get negative 1. Hey, wait a minute. Negative 1? It, wouldn't that make this zero? Negative one? Right? Negative one would turn that to zero? Now, look here. How far is the negative six from the negative one? Well, it's five units. And how far is negative one from positive four? It's five units. So you see it is in the middle. Now, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get this idea of a center because if you can get a center, you can kind of check your work. We expect to see this kind of work, but if you know what the center is, you can check it ahead of time, kind of easily. All right, so let's do this one. Let's pretend like we didn't just do that one up there. Hold on a second. Oh, excuse me, pardon me. Okay, so um, I want to be five units from some center. What center do I want to be away from? Well, I want to be five units away from negative one, whatever makes this thing in here zero. Okay, so let me put a negative one here. I'm going to go five units this way, and that'll be a negative six. Five units the other way, and that'll be a four. Okay, now it's not an equal to, so there'll be open points. And it's a great or, so they'll shade away. And look at this, I'm getting the answer without doing all the algebra, I'm just doing symmetry. Now again, you're going to have to show the work, but you can use this as a mental trick to see if your work is valid or makes sense. Okay, now if you want to test it, let's pick a number over here, let's pick 10. 10 plus 1, 11, absolute value of 11, 11, greater than 5, it sure is. If you pick a number over here, like say negative 9. Okay, negative 9 plus 1 is negative 8. Absolute value of negative 8 is 8. 8 is greater than 5. There you go. It's true. If you pick a number in here, like 0, you'll get a false statement. 0 plus 1 is 1. Absolute value of 1 is not greater than 5. All right. So 
Let's see if we can find the center. Oh, it gets a little bit different on this one. Tell you what, um, let me do one more here before we go to that one. Let's do the absolute value of x uh, plus 3. And let's make that less than, I don't know, 7. Okay, so I'm going to need a number line, right? There's my number line. And this is not all the work that I'm going to do, the algebra. This is my check. This is how I check it. So let me get an arrowhead on there. All right. So my center is going to be at, what do you think? Negative 3. Yeah, negative 3. Now I'm going to need to go 7 units to the right. Well, I think that'll take me to positive 4. And then I need to go um, 7 units to the left, which will take me to negative 10. Uh, the points are open because it's not equal to, and it's a less than, so I bet I'm going to shade this way. All right, let's go back and do this algebraically. We're going to go x plus, seven, uh, plus 3 is less than 7, and x plus 3 is greater than negative 7. All right, so let's solve it. x is less than 4, and uh, x is greater than negative 10. Oh, isn't that what I grabbed? My, don't I have numbers that are greater than negative 10 and at the same time less than positive 4? There you go. So you see how this is working? Now, it's just a slight bit different um, on this one here because, whoa, get out of there. All right. It's a slight bit different on this one because, uh, get back here, where are you? Gremlins have taken over again. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, because there's a 3 here. So let's, uh, let's solve it algebraically. Let's go 3x plus 2 is greater than 12. Or 3x plus 2 is less than negative 12. And so I'll get 3x is greater than 10. x is greater than 3 and a third, right? 10 thirds, 3 and a third. Okay, uh, 3x is going to be less than negative 14. So x is going to be less than uh, 4 and 2 thirds, negative 4 and 2 thirds, right? Okay, so I'm going to need negative 4 and 2 thirds on here. And over here I'm going to need 3 and 1 third. And let's see, they're going to be open points. And an or so it's going to go that way right now let's find the center you're probably thinking the center is negative two-thirds let's see if I took negative four and two-thirds and I added three and one-third to it well let's see here that would end up being one and one-third wouldn't it right okay and that'd be a negative and I'm going to convert that to a mixed number real quick. So it will be negative 4 thirds. Now, I have to average. So after I add, I have to divide by 2, which is the same as multiplying by a half. And then Wonder Woman's going to show up and turn that into 2. And look at that. I got a negative 2 thirds. Yeah, so the center is at negative two-thirds, because if I put negative two-thirds in here, I get zero, don't I? I mean, if you don't know, go 3x plus 2 equals zero. Solve that for x. And you're going to get negative two-thirds, right? Okay, so let me put this negative two-thirds on here. It's supposed to be smack in the middle. Negative two-thirds. All right. Now... How far away is this endpoint from negative two-thirds? Well, I think it's four units away, isn't it? And how far away is this? Well, it's two-thirds to zero, then three and a third. It's four units, but not 12. Huh, why do you suppose it's not 12? Well, it's because of this three. But what's 12 divided by 3? 4. Not a coincidence. So when we have the problems 
where uh, the lead coefficient, the coefficient on x is 1, we just took that number. We were actually dividing by 1, we just didn't recognize that we were doing that. We're going 5 divided by 1, and that's going to be the distance from the end point to the center, 5 units. Okay. Um, when we have a coefficient out front of x, then we need to divide this, this number here, this distance, by that coefficient. All right, so let's see if we can do this here. Okay, I'm going to try and do it my shortcut method to my checking method. So I think my center is going to be at 1 fourth. I think so, because 4x is going to equal 1, x is going to equal 1 fourth. All right, so there's my center. Okay, now how far am I going to go from the center? Well, I got an 8 and a 4, and 8 divided by 4 is 2, so I'm going to go 2 full units. So if I go 2 units this way, here, let me put a 0 in here, uh, put in fourths, so that would be 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths, 4 fourths, and then 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths. Okay, and then I'm going to need one more fourth, because i got to go 2 full units. I can show more than one more, that's okay. I'm trying to space them evenly. All right, I'll call that two and a half. So right now, uh, this point right here is at two and a fourth. So I'm suggesting I'm gonna have a closed point at two and a quarter, or two and a fourth. Now, I've gotta go two full units the other way from the center. Maybe I should make that center like a different color. Maybe I'll make it blue. There we go. Okay, so my center is the blue one, the one fourth, and then I'm going to the end point two and a four, two full units that way. Why two? Because eight divided by four is two. All right, now let me go two units the other way. So I've gone a quarter of a unit. And there's half, three quarters, and a four, uh, a full unit. But let's see here. That's not one, is it? Here's negative one right there. I think. Yeah, that one half. Okay, so this is. Let me go ahead. I'm starting to confuse you. I apologize. Let me go ahead and get this numbered better. And then we'll count the fourths. Okay, so that's negative one and then one and a quarter, one and a half, negative one and three quarters, negative two will be right there, and negative two and a quarter, negative two and a half. Alright, so let me count two units. So Four of these would make a whole unit, right? So one, two, three, four. So there's one unit. One, two, three, four. So there's two units. So it looks like I'm at negative one and three fourths. I'm going to have a closed point because it's equal to, and uh, it's an and. So the shading is going to go like this, right? That makes sense. Okay. Now. I'm going to go do it algebraically and see if I've got the right answers. If I did it right, I should come up with two uh, inequalities. One that says x is greater than negative 1 and 3 quarters, and one that says x is less than 2 and a quarter. So let's see if we, if we get that. So 4x minus 1 plus center equal to 8, and uh, 4x minus 1 is greater than or equal to negative 8. All right, so I'm going to add 1 to both sides and get 9. And then x is going to be less than or equal to 9 fourths, which is 2 and a quarter. How about that right there? All right, come over here and, oops, and uh, I'm going to add 1 to both sides and get negative 7. Going to divide by 4, and x is going to be greater than or equal to negative 7 fourths, which is, uh, sorry, that should be x. Okay, and then x is greater than or equal to negative 1 and 3 fourths. And look, it matches perfectly. Yep, negative 1 and 3 fourths. So let, let's try to do one together here. All right, let's make it up. Let's go to the absolute value of uh, 5x plus uh, 10 and let's make that greater than 
Oh, let's see. How about about 12? It's kind of a weird one, right? So my center should be what? Negative 2? All right, let me get a number line out here. You know, if you want to pause the video and figure this out on your own, I think it's awesome, and then go back and watch the video. All right. Again, this isn't required to do it this way, but I'm just trying to build your understanding using symmetry. All right, so I need a negative 2 on here. And how far am I going to be from each one? Well, I'm going to take the 12 and divide by 5. And I believe that's going to go 2 and 2 fifths. So it looks like I'm going to count by fifths. So let's go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, so that'll be negative 3. Oops, I'm sorry, silly me. That's going to be negative. That's going to be negative 1 over there, isn't it? Yeah. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's where 0 will be. And then 1, 2, 3. And I'm running out of room, so maybe I can do this. Oh, excuse me. Oh, must be springtime allergies kicking in. Let's see. No, it's not all going to move. All right, but that's okay. All right, now let me go on the other side and count by fifths. So there's one, two, three, four, five. So that'll be negative three. And then one, two, three, four, five. That's negative four. And then one, two, three, so. All right, so my center is here at negative two, and I need to move two and two-fifths units to the right and to the left. So one unit is here, two units, one-fifth, two-fifth. I'll bet one of my answers is going to be positive two-fifths. All right, let's go the other way. Let's go one unit. One, two, three, four, five, two units. One, two. I'll bet the other one is going to be here uh, at negative four and two fifths. And it's not a coincidence that if you take that negative two and you uh, subtract two and two fifths because you're moving to the left, you get negative four and two fifths. All right? And if you take that negative two and you add two and two fifths because you're moving to the right, aren't you going to get a positive two fifths? Okay. Now, I'll let you go ahead and solve it algebraically. I know it's an or, I know it's not equal to, so it's, they're going to be open points, open, and they're going to shade that way. All right, and they're going to shade that way. All right, but you go ahead and solve that algebraically to verify that this is correct. All right, Mr. Lawrence, signing off. Have a good night, everybody.